Hi, my name's Nikolai, aka 56 Miner, and today we're unboxing our April Basics box. We're super excited to share this box with you this month as we're the exclusive launch partners of the new Royal Talons and Pantone marker system. That means that you're getting first access to these products before they're even available in retail. So in this video, we'll go over the materials, talk a bit about technical drawing, and I'll share some tips and tricks that I picked up while working with everything. Let's get into it. For our surface, we have a custom 4x6 Pantone art pad from Royal Talons. The marker paper in this pad offers us a brilliant white, so we get the truest representation of our colors. And the next three items in our box are going to be a custom curated set of the Talons Pantone markers. Every marker in this line is going to come with a brush tip, which is going to be great for thin and thick lines, and more organic shapes, and a chisel tip, which is going to be great for initial sketching, perspective, and just getting those nice crisp lines. For our colors, we have 114, 304, and 218. Another great feature about these markers is that they're refillable. Taking a bit of paper towel, I can pinch off that chisel tip, which will reveal the internal reservoir of our marker. Now it's Pantone's dedication to color consistency that makes it such a favorite amongst graphic designers and product designers. So this month, I thought it'd be fun for us to revisit some of those technical drawing skills that we talked about in February of last year. I'm going to start by creating a simple cube, making sure that my lines are parallel, and then fill in some of those sides so that I can start to create an illusion of form and lighting. Now it's typical of any marker to have some level of streaking, and you can combat this by working quickly and making sure that you really saturate that paper with our ink. Next I'll go in and add a simple drop shadow, and I'm going to fill in the farthest side of my cube and that shadow area with the pink. Because these markers feature a pigment-based and water-based ink, we can get a lot of fun color mixing when combining our materials. And I'm going to use that blue just to separate my cube from its shadow. Now to get a better understanding of the colors available to us this month, I've gone ahead and created a small swatch chart. So to read this chart, we'll start from the row on the far left. So if we start with our yellow and then layer our blue, we'll get a nice green color. And if we start with our pink and then layer our yellow, we get more of an orangey tone. Now sketching straight with markers can be a bit intimidating. So this month we included the Grip Eco Pencil. That way you can sketch out your concept before going in with color. Let's continue exploring our fundamental shapes by doing a cylinder, a sphere, and a cone. This will be a great exercise of taking flat shapes into more three-dimensional objects. We can create an illusion of form with our cylinder by creating a turning edge, which is going to be a darker side away from the light. And we can turn our circle into a sphere by being conscious of how much value we build up on one side versus the other. So we'll have a strong highlight on one side and a shadow on the other, and that'll create a more three-dimensional effect. And we can combine both of these techniques and an added dimension of color by applying them to our cone. Now if you're interested in upping your technical drawing skills, definitely check out that box that we did as we go over how to create more complex forms. Now that we have a good understanding of our materials, let's take what we learned and apply it to something a bit more complex. For this, I'm going to take some inspiration from our prompt this month, Blossom, and sketch a few crocus. They're a fun, simple flower that bloom throughout the year, but are also a great hallmark of spring. You might know them from saffron, which is derived with their stigma. I'm starting my sketch by identifying some simple shapes, so I've got a circle where the blossom will be, and some cylinders for the stems. That's why those fundamental shapes are so important, they really inform anything that you want to draw. Now with my basic shapes established, I'll go in and start to define some of those petals. Now the petals around my blossom are going to follow the shape that I started with, so that kind of egg shape. I'm just wrapping those petals around. I'll add a stigma to the center, and then I'll do the same with my second flower. Organic things like flowers or nature offer a lot of freedom, so don't feel like it needs to be perfect. Uh, while our technical drawing is very structured, this you can be a little bit more loose. Now that I've got my sketch established, I can go in and start to have some fun with the colors that we have. 
So I'm gonna start with our yellow and I'm gonna identify the stigma as well as the stem because I'm gonna eventually go in and make that green. Next with our pink, I'm gonna go in and identify the shadow areas. So anything that's not facing the light directly and then I'll allow me to establish some depth in my shapes. Now crocus can bloom into different colors so let's create a purple one, utilizing the blue from our set. Overlaying our blue on our pink is going to give us a purple color, but overlaying the blue on the yellow is going to give us this really nice, vibrant green. A crocus can also come in a yellow variety, so let's do our secondary flower with our yellow. Here we can see those pinks still offer us this shadow, but it looks completely different than when we overlaid the blue. Now in order to create that purple flower, we do need to go back over it with our pink. I like to establish the shadows first because it gives me more information on how I want to build those values in darken areas. For our yellow flower, I'm just going to layer that yellow one more time to get a richer, darker value. I'm also going to go back over the stems with our blue, that way we can really emphasize the roundness to that form. Now for the purple flower itself, it does become a dance of pushing and pulling between those pinks and those blues because we want to build our value to imply the shape. And if you want to round out your flower or maybe adjust something after your initial sketch, feel free. Art is always a process, it's just about taking your time and having fun. And with that, our video is complete. Hope you enjoyed it, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use hashtag SketchboxApril. We love seeing what y'all create each month. And if you want to check out any of our previous videos, head over to our YouTube channel where you can like and subscribe. And I'll see you next month.